All right, welcome back to C Programming Skills using Replit. I'm Norman McIntyre. Let's get started. We're on part three for this miles to kilometers program. The version three will prompt for miles only if it's not entered on the console. So I think you'll find this one quite interesting. So we'll continue to build on our version two. Remember from the previous video, for version two, at line number five, we added a pound to find where we could give the version number so that we could just change the version number here and it would take care of the output. We see also we added at line 18 and 19, we prompted the user to enter the miles. So if I say I drove 5.5 miles and press enter and it calculates that for us. Now in this one, we want to be able to do the following. If I say, miles so so right now if I say main it always prompts us right so let's say I enter 100 miles it prompts us every time but suppose I want to make it where if you put the 100 on the command line instead of prompting it executes it for us right away okay so that's our goal so what will be new here is finding out how you can detect whether or not you've entered something and you will only prompt if, there's, if this is not here. So let's see how we do that. I think you'll find this quite interesting because, as you know, uh, many programs uh, look at what's on the command line to know how to operate. So let's click on stop here. So first, this is going to be version 3. So that's going to be our first change, right? Version 3. Now second, and I'm going to comment this out so you can remember how it was originally, but we're going to change it. We're going to have an int main, but instead of void, which means nothing is passed into this, we're going to say what's going to be passed into us is an integer, which the convention is to call it argc for argument count. Also, we're going to have a character, a character pointer to argv array. Now, don't be scared away by that, <laughs> that syntax there. Just bear with me here. A character pointer to something called an array v. V is often represents a vector, which is an array, which is more than one. So I realize this is kind of scary syntax right now, and it's not fully understood, but that's okay. We'll explain it more as we need to. The key for us, though, is when your main is called, it actually passes into you the number of arguments. It actually gets passed into you. In fact, let's come down here just to help us learn. Let's say printf argc percent d, because right this is an integer, backslash n, and let's print the value of argc, which again stands for argument count. Let's run our program. So here, since the arg count is 1, hmm, arg count is 1. Well, it turns out it starts the argument count with the name of the program. So you will always have an argument count of one. Always, always. Because you always go have the name of the program. But suppose we did it like this. Suppose we said main 100. Aha! The argument count is two. The argument count is 2. So that means we can make a decision based on if the argument count is 1, we can do one thing. If the argument count is 2, we can do something else. This concept in writing code is used all the time where you make a decision and you go one way or the other. So argc for arg count. Well, what that means, when we get here, right now we're always prompting for this. 
But what we want to do different now is we want to say, and I think I'll I'll move this version one thing. I'll comment that I almost say determine argument. So we'll say if one is exactly equal to our count. Open curly brace. Come over here and tab over. And, and the tabbing over is important. And this is something new. We've got an if statement. If the value of 1, notice this double equals, if it's exactly equal to our count. In other words, if we've only got the name of the command, then we should prompt. Let's see what we've got now. If I click on run, our counts 1, it says enter miles. So I'll say 100. But suppose from the command line, I say main, and I say 100. Notice we did not get a prompt. In fact, we've got our count is 2. We got KMS of 0 because basically we did not compute that. right? We did not. The miles was, was at 0, and so we did not compute that. So what we really need is we need what's called an elf, else statement. And in fact, I'm going to say printf to do handle else, just, just to, to give us some practice. And I'll say exit. I say exit 1. Now when I put exit 1, actually, you know what? We'll just do this. We'll say return 1. Forget the exit 1. I'll talk about that in another video. But... But so notice here we're returning one, here we're returning zero. So this is a, 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 this allows us to say we've still got more work to do. This is you'll often do this when you're writing code. So we have an if, else. Let's click on run. So here enter miles ten, that worked fine. But if I say main uh, ten, press enter to do handle the else case. So here's what we have to do to handle the else case. We need to get the input from command line. And how we're going to do this is say miles is equal to, there's a function called ASCII to float. A to F, and we're going to give it arg v of 1. Now, I realize this is very confusing right now, but let's just take it a step at a time. First, we've got a new function, arg c. And notice it says, says we've got our warning saying implicit declaration is invalid. Anytime you see implicit declaration, it means you're missing a header file. Right, so it means you're missing a header file. So we need to add a header file. But before we do that, let's go ahead and click on Run. We get our warning. But notice, although we get our warning, it's still running our program. Now, our goal is to not have any warnings. But this is a good example of how, even though you've got the warning, it still runs. So here I type 10, and it runs that. Here if I do main, let me put 10 here. It runs, and actually I did not, instead of this return zero, let me, by the way, this shows the importance of just constantly running your code. You can quickly tell when you need to make a change. So in this case, I realized if I enter the value here, I don't want it to return, zero, to return one, right? I want to actually do this, which we're still trying to understand what this does, but ASCII to float is basically saying take this value and turn it into a floating point value. So 
So let's run it again. So here, period slash main 10. And notice we've got the R count of that. We see our, our KMS um, actually got to be zero. So we've still got some work to do on this, right? It's not, not coming to what we expected. So what we'll do is as follows. First, let's take care of this uh, implicit declaration. I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to try a few things. I'm going to say, well, maybe it's in, um, maybe it's in something called standardlib.h. So there's another header file called standardlib, and I want you to notice as soon as I typed in standardlib, we got, we got this. It went away. In fact, when I comment this out, we see the warning comes back. And come in and it goes away. So that's good. Now when we run our code, we when we compile it, we don't get the warning. It's still not working quite like we want. Because we see, oh, wait. Where is it? Let's run it again. Main. This is when this is always the exciting part when you when you see your code working like it should. We'll say 10. Okay, that gave us that. How about if we say main 10? Ah, oh, we've got it working. We've got it working. So whether you enter it like this, or whether you enter it like this, in both cases we get the same value. Now, the part that I realize is very confusing is this part here. The argv, which means there's a, a vector which is no more than more, it's more than one. It turns out if you ask for argv of one, which is all we need to know for right now, argv of one is your first parameter after the command, or the, I should say the first argument after the command. So although we don't understand all the details of this, for now just memorize that if you say argv of one, you will get the very first argument that comes after the command. Okay, the very first start. And that's what we're doing here. And what we're saying is take that argument, which this is actually in text. It's called ASCII text, American Standard Code for Information Interchange. It takes this text and converts it into a floating point into miles. So, super cool. We've got an if statement. We can handle either case. This is probably one of those videos you want to watch multiple times and uh, play with it a little bit, see the different things you've got. But at the end, we've got a pretty cool program in that we can either run it and uh, prompt the user, or we can run it and typing the value, the miles directly on the command line and execute it like that. So we've got our if statement, and for the first time ever, you've gained insight on how you can pass an argument count and an array of argument vectors into your program. All right, thanks for making it through yet another one. More to come in the next video. I'm Norman McIntyre. Thanks as always for watching.